My problem with Last Jedi is not that it was subversive, it's that I don't believe the character motivations. I have a hard time, they had to break Luke Skywalker as a character in order to push him around to make him do things in the plot that don't make sense to me. You're telling me that Luke, who is so angry that he chops his father's hand off and then realizes what a bad move that is, then allows the Emperor to fry him with lightning, right? He, he, he takes amazing amounts of abuse by a Sith Lord, right? And will not fight back, refuses. He is nothing but compassion. And with his father, wants to save his father. And then suddenly, 10, 20 years later, he's threatened by one of his students so badly that he goes psycho? That's not Luke. I don't know who that is, but that doesn't make any sense. And that's like the crux of Kylo Ren's creation myth. And that's when I go, all right, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. Like, I, I, now I, I, you broke the character. You, 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 had, you had to mess the character up to do what you wanted because you wanted to do something different. I'm all for something different, but make it better, right? M improve on what's going on and don't break the characters. There is a way, there is a way to make Luke Skywalker jaded, absolutely. The way they did it doesn't make sense, right? There's always another solution. So again, subversive is fine. I'm even cool with adaptation. Like for instance, Fellowship of the Ring, um, especially like the theatrical cut, the, the, the extended version is good. It's, it's a little, it's got some slow points, but the theatrical cut of Fellowship of the Ring is brilliant, you know? And I'm a huge Tolkien uh, scholar and they took the whole race from the Shire to Rivendell, which takes like a month or more, and they compressed it to like a couple of days. It's brilliant. Like a race to Rivendell, and I'm like, nice, nice adjustment. You know, like that's a totally brilliant adaptation to make it work on film. The only thing that's missing from the theatrical cut that's in the extended is Boromir being tempted by the ring multiple times, which is really nice, because that's that's nice so that when Boromir finally goes over, you've seen him, he's, you've seen him try to resist it like three or four times. Whereas the theatrical cut, I think it only happens once when they're in Karathras going over the pass. And so you're like, oh, Boromir flipped pretty quick. Um, but other than that, like, these are nickels, right? Fellowship, really good. Two Towers and Return of the King, I have more issues, right? Because they, they take some more liberties that make, like, the Ents don't know their force is getting cut down. What? That doesn't make any sense. You know, like, that's not good, right? So I'm all for that, and I'm all for being subversive, but you've got to be smart. You've got to be good about it. Uh, took these decisions. Would you say it might make sense to the Star Wars No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because you've had to break characters to get that myth. Now let me get this straight. Holdo, the Laura Dern character, right? She's the Admiral. She has a plan to save everybody, but she refuses to tell anyone. If you were on a submarine that was underwater and you were running out of air, and you looked to your captain and said, do you have a plan? You just have to have faith. As Leia would say, you'd be like, screw you, I'm mutiny. <laughs> you would do exactly what Poe and the other characters did, right? And because they did that, they screwed up Holdo's plan. And so you go, Holdo should have told them what the plan was. And you say, okay, but we don't want that to happen in the story for whatever reason. Okay, well, there's a way to solve that. Have Holdo be worried that there's a spy on the ship. And if she tells the plan, it'll get back to the Empire and they're screwed. And so Holdo has to take somebody into her confidence to try to deal with this, right? Now I have sympathy for Holdo. As it is, she's an idiot. <laughs> she's an, she is the worst commanding officer. I mean, it's just stupid. You have people who are literally going to, like effectively on a submarine, they're gonna, they're gonna asphyxiate. And you're just telling them to believe. Screw you, I wanna get out of here. And because she did that, they end up do tipping off the Empire. The Empire does figure out their st and then everyone dies. Completely irresponsible. So is Poe, by the man. He's a war criminal. But, um... <laughs> that's in the first part. In the first act, the bombers, total war criminal maneuver. He should have been court martial. I don't know why anyone has patience for him. He's a jackass. <laughs> um, but at least I understand what he did in Acts 2 and 3 of the film. So th this is a problem. Because you go, well, why would you do the, you, again, you are, you are breaking the characters to push them around to get the plot you want because I like it. Because let the past die. Write a better story and I will. <laughs> I will gladly let the past die if you will give me something new. If you will give me something new that works rather than just thumbing your nose at the past. I don't like you, dad. Oh, that's really compelling. <laughs>
<laughs> That's basically all of Kylo Ren. I don't like you, Dad. Oh, you're real threatening, dude. Can I have Darth Vader back, please? <laughs> Can I have Boba Fett back? Boba Fett's more threatening than you. <laughs>